and he was still making only 60 bucks a week. He had no family and few friends. He was quiet, courteous, commonplace, and careful. Nobody could tell you anecdotes about Potter. Nobody could even describe him very well. We found that out. He went about his duties without ever complaining or revealing the intention that must have been burning inside him for years. Then it happened. One day, Potter didn't report for work. Nobody cared very much. In fact, nobody seemed to notice it. When he didn't show up the next day, somebody thought it might be a good idea to call his home and see if he'd broken a leg or something. There wasn't any answer. They didn't get really disturbed about it until the third day. What is it, Newton? Out with it, man. I don't have all day. What's the matter with you? It's about Potter, sir. Oh, he's back, is he? Good man, Potter. I wish I had more men like him. Never complains, never asks for a raise. Where's, where's he been? It's... it's not that, Mr. Halverson. It... What is it, then? Won't he tell? <laughs> now, there's a quiet man for you, eh, Newton? You know what they say about still water. Yes, sir. You better show him in. I'll, uh, I'll get it out of him. But he's not here, sir. He, he's still not here. Oh. Well, then the poor man must have met with an accident or something. Has anyone thought of calling the hospitals? Sir, I, I, I was checking his books and... and... And what, Newton? They don't balance, sir. There's a discrepancy. A discrepancy? Yes, sir. How much of a discrepancy? Two hundred thousand dollars, sir. <laughs> You knew you couldn't get away with it. Whatever made you try? Oh, no, that's not true, Lieutenant. I thought I could get away with it. I really did. But now you know differently. Is that it? Uh, no, you don't understand. You see, I didn't realize the effect it was going to have on me. After all those years of planning to do it someday, I had to go through with it. Don't you see? But afterwards? Well, after it was over and I had time to think about it, I realize I just couldn't go through with it. That's all. But don't feel badly about it, Potter. A lot of first-timers lose their nerve after pulling off a job. You did the right thing, coming here the way you did, giving yourself up. You know, that took courage. Just proves, Mr. Potter, that you're really not the criminal type. And Mr. Halvers is going to be real proud of you. Oh, I don't think so. You don't know our Mr. Halverson. I'm sorry about him. I've caused him a lot of worry. Mr. Newton, too. I hope they'll understand. Well, they're not worried now. Because we're going to tell them how you walked right in here and told us all about it. You know, I wish every job would end this way. It would make it easier for all of us. You said it, Captain. You didn't happen to bring the money with you. No, I didn't. Well, that's all right. We'll send a couple of men out after it. Where is it? You do have the money, don't you? Mr. Potter, you're not going to tell us that you've lost it or anything silly like that, are you? Where is the money, Mr. Potter? It's as I told you. I took the money, and I'm willing to give myself up. Well, are you also willing to go to jail? Because you know that's exactly where you're going to land unless you tell us where you've hidden that money. I'm willing to go to jail if I have to. You don't seem to understand. You could draw a long stretch for a theft as large as this one. Doesn't matter now. Well, you'll be spending the best part of your life in jail. Mr. Potter, where is the money? I'm not going to tell you. Potter, do you have any idea what prison's like? Look, why don't you make it easy for yourself? You'll probably get off real light if you just return the dough. Hardly any prison term at all. Lieutenant Fisher is right. This is your first offense. Judges always look kindly on a man who admits his mistake, especially the first time. Now, you just give back the 200 grand, and both Metro and the insurance company will go easy on you. I practically promise it. 
Now, how about it? You look like a sane and sensible man. You don't want to do a long stretch in the pen. I'm sorry. I'm putting you fellows for an awful lot of bother, and I don't mean to. Well, then tell us where the money is. It's as I said. I took the money because I thought I could get away with it. But after I took it, I realized I wasn't cut out to be a hunted criminal. I couldn't stand the idea of being hounded for the rest of my life. Oh, I know how Mr. Halverson would be, and, and the insurance company, too. To say nothing of you fellas. So when I thought about that, I realized I wasn't cut out to be the running type. That's all. So I gave myself up. Please, please, Mr. Potter, will you just tell us where the money is? No. We've been nice to you, Potter. But it gets rough from here on out. I suppose you're the type that thinks you won't mind prison life, huh? You think it's gonna be like the army? You ought to be told where to go, what to do. You think it's gonna be like that, don't you? Good eats, movies, well, maybe even a three-day pass. Well, you've got a big surprise coming, Potter, a great big surprise. Concrete and steel room for 20 long years, Potter. The same meals, the same four walls, nothing to do. And the days stretching out in front of you, never ending. And your fellow convicts, murderers, thieves, arsonists. Is that the way you want it, Potter? Well, is it? That's the way it has to be. I thought about Potter quite a lot over the years. Why was he so stubborn? He wasn't the criminal type. Why did he insist that was the way it had to be? Well, Potter never broke down. The trial was short and sweet. He pleaded guilty and got a 15-year sentence. That was back in 47, like I said. He got three years clipped off a sentence for good behavior. How do you adjust to prison life? He was a model prisoner from the first day he walked through the gates. He put him to work in the prison library most of the time. He did a lot of reading. Travel books mainly, so I've heard. But he got out two days ago, Captain. He's got a head start on you. It won't matter. You know, that 200 grand doesn't belong to him, even if he thinks he earned it by doing a stretch in the pen. I'm gonna get his address from his parole officer. Pay him a little visit. I'm going to tell him a few of the facts of life. You're going to see him today? Why not? I've had this appointment for a long time. Yes? Mr. Potter, I'm Captain Ernest Fisher. Remember me? Of course. Come on in. I was Lieutenant Fisher the last time we met Mr. Potter. That was a long time ago. Yes, it was a long time ago. Twelve long years ago. You going somewhere? I just moved in. What'd you want, Captain? Well, I understand that you did real well in prison. At least there were no complaints about your conduct that I heard. Oh, I didn't get any trouble. I minded my own business. It didn't bother anybody. Nobody bothered me. Well, if I know you, they hardly knew you were there. I knew I was there, Captain. Of course you did. That ship. I wonder if the world smells different, if it feels different where she's going. Well, I wouldn't know about that, Mr. Potter. And I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. You're not going any place. I know. You know, it was obvious to everyone what your plan was. You thought you'd be set to enjoy that money when you got out of prison. But these things aren't done that way. I want you to know that I'm making it my personal duty to see that you don't carry out your plan. That money does not belong to you. But Captain, you're all wrong about me. Oh, really? Yes, you are. I know that's what the world thinks. I know what everybody thinks. But they're wrong. Are they? Look, I'll tell you the truth. I thought that life in prison wouldn't be too hard. At times, it wasn't. But a lot of the times you had nothing to do but to think. A lot of time. So I made up my mind what I have to do. Captain, I'm ready to give the money back. You're what? I'm ready to give the money back. All I want is to be left alone, to be able to live in peace. Don't you understand? Well, I'm trying hard to. Where's the money? Right here, in this room. Right here in this suitcase. Every penny of it.
I think you're going to enjoy this. No, oh, I shall. Imported. Yeah, this is the best year you can buy. Back in the States, I never take a drink before 5 o'clock. Oh, this is the very best time of day to drink champagne. You know, I'm going on to France to the vineyards where the grapes come from. I may buy a case or two. France? Mm-hmm. But, but this ship's going to Hawaii. I know. But I intend to go on to Asia, the Orient, all around the world. I certainly envy you your trip. Oh, when I retired, I determined to travel. Retired? With the way taxes are today, how'd you ever manage it? Investments. Did you ever stop to think how much $200,000 earns in 12 years in interest, compounded quarterly in various carefully selected savings banks? $154,862.25. I see. But how can a man get hold of $200,000 to invest? You might try borrowing it. I did. Oh. 